Good morning, loved ones. How are you guys today? It is early, and I went to bed early, so I'm up early. So I got a little frog in my voice, and I look a little tired. <clears throat> okay, but today, I want to talk about, well, I want to talk about work, when you're working with white people. And white people, if you're on here and you see this, please stay. This could help you be a better co-worker or a better employer, okay? Um... So when I watched this, you know, I heard about the scandal with Lori Laughlin and uh, Felicity Hoffman and how they were paying and scamming to get their kids into school. So what you guys realize this, the scam doesn't stop there. The scam continues on because they got to get them fake grades because remember they had to pay to get them into the school. That means they weren't qualified. OK, um, so they, they do the fake grades. You know, those degrees are bullshit at the end of the day. All right. So that made me think of. You know, when you work with white people, like I work in corporate America and um, it's interesting because there are those times when you say, that motherfucker graduated from where? Oh, shit. Really? They making all that money. Why? I'm doing all the work and they're getting all the credit because of what? Those are the reasons why. So we already been on to it. We know what time it is and we know how it goes. But I want to tell you all this quick story, right? So back in the day, I used to... um. I was, I was, I was signing up. I was looking for a new job. Right. So at first I was using my name, but I wasn't getting callbacks. Right. But so one day this temp agency called me and I went into this place and the man was like, haven't you been here before? I was like, no. He was like, yes, you were. You've been here before. I said, no, I've never been here before. I said, oh, there's somebody else. We got the same name, but I spelled my name different. So at that point I switched my name on my resume and then bam, I got a job. Right. So one day I'm at work and the people are calling me by my middle name and I'm ignoring their asses because don't nobody call me that in real life. So I was like, mm -hmm. to the ladies like, hello. I'm like, oh my God, you're talking to me. Then I said to her, I'm so sorry. Listen, I put a different name on my resume. That ain't my name. That's my middle name. I don't go by that. But that was real funny. <clears throat> so when I got there, I was a schedule. I used to do the scheduling. And when I arrived there, the filing system was a hot ass mess. I mean mess all right so i take the time get all this shit together and in order everything is going smooth then all of a sudden they start shading me now when you're at work and you feel like people are shading you they are they are so i'm like oh damn so one day one of the doctors now i work for um doctors who treated autism the top in the game and I'm going to tell you now, if you feel like you have issues with your children or they're not progressing the way that you feel they should be, and you also should be checking to see where they are. You can Google it, what stages they should be in at what ages. And um, do birth to three months, you know. Don't be afraid. It's best to get early treatment, okay? A lot of it has to do with diet and allergies. So, you know, just if you have an issue with your kid, please get them checked. So anyway, so they was acting shady. So one day, one of them left, and I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to take me a quick nap in the, um, <laughs> in the, um, in, um, what is it, the therapy room, right? So when she left, like five minutes later, the other one came back, so I jump up real quick. But my desk is on the other wall, so there's the therapy room, there's a door. So she doesn't see me standing in the therapy room, so I'm standing there, and I'm watching her. So since I'm not at my desk, she walked by and she stopped at my screen and she's staring and staring. I was like, okay, this is not a bitch getting down. All right, whatever. Cool. All right. So now all of a sudden there's a problem with the filing system. Oh, there are um, documents and um, charts that don't belong there. Da, da, da. It's a problem. It's a problem. It's a problem. Now, mind you, I'm prepping these charts every night. So I know what's in the charts. And I'm like, you bugging. So it gets to the point where we all, it's like, it's a small office. So it's about seven of us and we're having a meeting one morning. And there was a lady there named Betsy and y'all know Betsy's Caucasian. So she was a coworker. The boss is talking to me. We're going over about the charts and Betsy's like, well, maybe you, I said, Betsy, mind your business. Like, just mind your business. You know, I'm shutting her down right off. Mind your business. Cause this ain't got shit to do with you. I don't need you to come up with an excuse for me, bitch. I can spell. Thank you. So the other doctor is like, I, she's coming at me sideways too, right? So the head doctor, she's saying to me, 
I don't like how you speak to Betsy. And I'm just looking at her because I'm like, I know goddamn well you don't want me to apologize to Betsy when this bitch is talking to me crazy and you ain't asking her to apologize to me. Mind you, I'm the only black person who works there. And that happens, you know? So, of course, I don't know shit. Of course, I'm dumb. <clears throat> so, by the end of the meeting, because I wasn't breaking and I wasn't... I, I'm not... A bitch, I can spell. So, no. So... She's like, so what are you saying, that you're being sabotaged? I was like, absolutely. When you believe in what you're saying, don't let people trick you into crazy, thinking you're crazy. Because she was like, so if, so what you're saying is you're being sabotaged. I was like, yep, that's exactly what I'm saying. So now we leave the meeting, and I'm pissed. They pissed. I'm pissed. Because I know this lady tripping. So I go back to my desk. This is on a Thursday. I'm about to leave. And something said, check the charts before you go. It was only like three patients that next day on a Friday. I checked the damn charts. Don't y'all know that there was paperwork in there that didn't belong in there? So I go back there. I said, uh, what is this? I didn't put that in there. I said, I just checked the chart. And what is this? Somebody put this in here. The head doctor, y'all. The head doctor. Who's so smart and brilliant. I won't take that away from her, but lacks common sense, okay? Says to... Me, oh my God! I accident. I've been using other patient, other labs, recycled papers for notes for other patients. Now the other doctor who was giving me hell looked at her and was like, "What?" Because that's a complete HIPAA violation. But meanwhile, while you dragging me up and down the streets, blaming me for everything, you're the one sabotaging me. So I was, ooh, y'all know I was on fire at this point, but I can't quit. Don't y'all be out here quitting jobs when people piss you off. Let them bitches fire you, okay? So I went back to my desk. She came to apologize. Now, y'all know steam is coming out my ears at this point. I said, listen, at this point, I want to quit, but I can't because I need my unemployment, all right? This is on a Thursday. So Tuesday, she came back to the office. She said, here. Here's a letter of recommendation. Here's one month severance pay, and you can um, collect unemployment. I'm really sorry. All right, I let it go. You know what I'm saying? Like, But this is what I'm talking about, because they've been told that they're better than us. They've been told they're smarter than us. They've been told that um, we're all ignorant. We can't make bad decisions. Then you got the, the good decisions, but then you have the flip side of them who know that we are smart, and we do know what we're doing, but then they will use you for your talent. The same way the rules don't apply to you. Like, you could go to the bathroom for five minutes, and they'll be like, oh, where's Stephanie? Where did she go? What is she doing? Stephanie? And, but, you got your white co-worker over here who can go smoke cigarettes, stop on the third floor, go grab a Snicker bar, uh, possibly stop by someone else's desk on the way, and nobody says a word. I know that I used to work with these ladies and, um, you know, we, I, we were all commuting southbound, everybody, right? But I would make it in early or whatever because I will go to back roads. But I remember one morning, now mind you, these chicks would come in 40 minutes late, hour 20 minutes late, and they don't feel the need to let you know that they're going to be late because they're better than you. You know what I'm saying? So, and I don't give a shit. I don't care where you are anyway. But so I remember one morning it was just too fucking funny. I'm 10 minutes late. And I get a text. Are you coming in today? I was like, is this bitch for real? Another day, I was, um, it was early in the morning. I had went to the cafeteria or whatever. My coworker, she's the new supervisor now. And she comes in and she, um, I'm downstairs. She sends me a text. Oh, you're working from home? No, actually, I wasn't even downstairs. I had come back from downstairs. I was sitting at my desk. She's sitting adjacent from me, mind you. If she had just looked up, she would have saw me sitting there. But I get a text while I'm sitting at my desk. Are you working from home today? Like, bitch, if I was working from home today, A, you would see me online, and B, I would have told you that yesterday. But no. But, you know, that's how they play. That's the game, you know, that y'all play. So if you're a Caucasian and you're watching this video, you guys really need to do better. You antagonize people. The rules don't apply to everyone across the board. You don't give credit where credit is due. There is definitely a gang mob mentality around. Not all of y'all, but a lot of y'all. The majority, yes, the majority. And y'all know it's true. 
Because the ones that are not like that, you sit on the outside. And you guys can't really say anything because y'all know what the deal is. You know how they treat you if you defend someone other than them. That's just what it is. I also had an incident at that same job where, you know, where they text me, am I coming in today and all that kind of nonsense. So I had a coworker who harassed me every single day that I was there. Okay. And one thing about me, I'm the same everywhere. It don't matter. So, you know, I was, you know, I was shaved this whole, like, get on my face. Please leave me alone. Okay. Okay. You know, when people will say things, she'll be like, common sense should tell you. She said that shit one time too many one day. And I was like, common sense should tell you. And then I just shut her ass down real quick that that's disrespectful and that's rude. I don't speak to you that way. Don't speak to me that way. I'm not your child. So, you know, you in a cubicle. So the next morning, my boss calls me in and said, hey, um, Candy and Robert heard you getting snippy with your coworker. I said, yeah. Well, did Candy and Robert hear her getting snippy with me? This bitch don't come at me with that if you're not going to bring her in here too. Then I had to inform her that Miss Thing talked shit about her as well. She was like, what did she say about me? I said, that's not important because I ain't messy like that. Okay, bitch. But what you need to know is that she's harassing me. See, but they never see it that way. It's never, it doesn't matter. They can stand in your face and see it going down and they don't see it that way. Another day which was crazy because I knew that same coworker. Cause I'm gonna tell y'all this heifer harassed me every day, you know? And when she felt like being nice, she would. So, you know, I'm the type of coworker. I really don't give a damn about you like that. Like, I just want to do my work and go home. You go to lunch, you do whatever the hell you want to do when you feel the need. That is your prerogative. Okay. So she was like, cause you know, when you first start a job, you write notes, you do what you got to do. She's like, well, you should know this. You should know that. I'm like, listen, and first of all, this woman was ancient. So where I would right click and do something, she would go through the whole menu bar and do all of that kind of nonsense. I'm like, girl, girl, update your shit. That's not how you do it. I'm like, yeah, it is. Then when I show her, oh, oh, you know, because then they know it all too. But the funny shit was, so usually I would tuck my chair in, but this one day, for some reason, my chair was turned outward. So I got all the way to my car and I was like, shit, I forgot my cell phone. Y'all know you got to go back for the phone. So as I'm creeping back to, well, not creeping, but I'm walking back to my desk and I see her at my, our boss's desk. So I slide over into my chair and I just sit down and I slide down and I'm like, what when I tell y'all this woman was talking mad cash shit about me. Now, mind you, this is my job, so I can't really say nothing. But what I did do, so she got her head down. So I I didn't have to go back that way. I could have left without her seeing me, but that ain't how I roll. So I went around. I stood like I was just standing there looking at this bitch. You know, you know, to the point where you eyeballing somebody that they feel the heat on their damn neck. But she I was she was facing, but I was looking and she looked up and I was standing there. Then I walked by and I looked at her and my boss and looked both of them bitches up and down dirty. Because first of all, as an employer, you don't have to listen to all kind of bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Especially if you know that the person is a problem. Don't do it. Because I'm looking at you fucked up too. Like I would ask her a question and she'd be like, oh, matter of fact, my boss, one day I said to her, I wanted to train and learn something different. She's like, oh, what made you want to do that? I'm like, bitch, I'm sitting here. Why not? And it's free. But why would you ask somebody why they want to grow, why they want to educate themselves, why they want to learn more? What? How does that affect you? You should want them to do that. But it's just, it's double standards. The same way, like I said, y'all get them free. You know that that admission scandal does not stop at admission. OK, that shit goes far beyond that is grades, that is uh, paperwork, term papers, all of that is bogus shit, because I know I'm not the only person who has worked with people and been like, again, where the fuck did you come from? Because one year, one year there was a chairman, the chairman's secretary. So, you know, she made about one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year sending out memos with typos in them. But then you got the lower level people down here, you know, can barely get a damn bonus. But because she's, you know, Caucasian or she got a fat ass, not really sure. But y'all know how it goes, because that's another thing, too. They discriminate against people based on looks. 
Because I know, like I said, I'm sure I'm not the only person who's worked somewhere and where and been like, how the hell? How? <laughs> it just does. I have actually a friend of mine, good friend of mine, smart black man, single two ladies, no children, but you know, he has a master's degree and people around him get promoted and they have nothing. And that is, if that is not telling, I don't know what it is because he earned his shit. Not only does he have a master's degree, you know, he's CPCU. And when I tell y'all, he reads those books and he pat, he has never had to take a test twice. And anybody who's in insurance, y'all know those tests are difficult, but he's knocked them all out the park. So he's CPCU, but they will promote someone who doesn't have anything. Or who's less than qualified. And then they will promote people. And then y'all want the black person to train them. You promoted them. Or instead of promoting the black person who's been there doing the job all along. You go to an outside source. Hire someone who knows nothing. And then you expect the black person to train this person. So, no. No. And one of my other girlfriends, after I got laid off, I knew my layoff was coming. See, I ask questions and I pay attention and I read between the lines. You know what I'm saying? My shit, I knew, I saw we was losing accounts. So I was like, oh, this is about to be a wrap. And I had um, breakfast with the president one day and I was like, hey, so, you know, what do you think the status of our department is? Like, where, where are things going with us? Because we had new management and every, we had a new CEO coming and everything. So they was like, you know, we really don't see the need for that department. Bingo. Your ass will be gone in a few. So be prepared. And that's what happened. But there was another black lady there in a uh, managerial spot. And I had peeped what was going down. I'm like, damn, they keep giving her more and more work. I said, yo, she's going to be gone too. Because I had already been telling people that I was going to be gone. But I said, is she going to be gone with me? And it was, you know, it was a few other people too. But everyone was surprised to see her go. But I wasn't because they were putting too much on her. But see, as a black woman, even as a black man in corporate America, you can't you can't say no. You can't say no. Even you'll notice that when you're in the buildings like me, I'm friendly with everybody. Everybody know me. But, you know, there are black people who won't even speak to you. It's like, damn, there's only eight of us in the building. You ain't going to say good morning. And they won't. That's how real that shit is. Like, they don't want to be guilty by association. They don't want it to um, seem as though, you know, because you know that if it's more than one black person, it's a meeting. Go figure. <laughs> it could be 12 of them talking loud in the corridor, but it could be you and your homegirl. Oh, is there a meeting? And y'all say dumb shit like that. It's rude. <laughs> it's ignorant. It's racist. Y'all do a lot of things that are inappropriate. Now, I ain't gonna lie, you know. In some senses, I just prefer to work with y'all because y'all leaves me to fuck alone. But then y'all are irritating. Because I don't like that and he says, she said, mess at work either. I don't do that. I don't care. Stay away from me with that. So, that is one thing about them. Like, I can stay in my lane and cruise and not have to be friendly with people. So, I told y'all I don't get along and I don't play well with others. And that's everywhere. So, I stay to myself. I got people I like and I hang out with. Now, don't get me wrong. I got my people's peoples. And at work, I had people's peoples. But in that immediate core group I worked with, mm-hmm. Because I had one boss, the head boss, a white woman. She was from, um, she grew up in Staten Island, but I think she was from England some damn where. Do y'all know this bitch will walk in and speak to this person, this person, this person, skip me, then go to the next person? And you know, I didn't give a fuck. So when I would see her coming directly at me, I would just kind of, it would be funny because sometimes I would look down. Sometimes I would just bust her right. You know, because I ain't crazy enough to fuck up my money and look that bitch up and down like I wanted to. But you know, she got the vibe. Like, I don't fuck with you. Like, she about to get on the elevator, I'll wait for the next one. Like, yeah. Or I'll go on around, bitch, I'll take the steps. But, you know, um, it's a lot of mistreatment that goes on in the workplace. So, you know, white people pull the shit together. Because the, 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 the gig is up. The lights are shining bright. Excuse me. Definitely shining. Because we are not surprised about that scandal. 
We been knowing that. We go to school with y'all. We work with y'all. We knew that it was a lot of bullshit going on. Then did y'all see how Lori Laughlin's daughter said that her father, I didn't even know she was married to that designer guy. What is it? Mismo? Mismo? How do you pronounce it? M-I-S-M-O? But the daughter said, well, hell, he cheated his way through college too. But well, damn, bitch, just because you getting thrown under the bus, don't throw him under the bus. He already made it, him and his friends. But we already know. But anyway, y'all, have a good day. And I hope things go well for y'all at work. And just know that, like I said, it's not just you. You ain't tripping. And don't you quit your damn job if you're not in a position. Let them fire your ass. See, when you quit and walk off, you ain't got nothing coming. So, if there's ever a problem, you know, and there's a few key words you can use down at the HR too, like harassment. Um, I am mentally, you know, I'm stressed out. And do yourself a favor too sometimes. See, but Trump then changed up all the laws. But you could go to the doctor and just document that, you know, work has been stressing me out documentation you know because it is what it is and they do what they do all right guys have a good day happy saturday deuces